Hello, Karnak Radio Facebook page. This is Brian Foster, and we're bringing you another Sunday program. It starts at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, all time zones in between, and around the world. And today we're going to bring chapter 24 of the Gospel According to Spiritism. Do not hide your light under a bushel. What does that mean? Well, I know what I think it means. It means if you're given an attribute or a talent that can be for the good to help people become more spiritual or any type of more fraternal, charitable, or, or, or loving, then one should use it. But let's see what Alan Kardec says. But first, please tell your friends about Kardec Radio. Tell your friends about Kardec Radio on your Apple iOS device or your Android device. You can just go to the Play Store or your Apple Store and, you know, download it. It's free. You can get Kardec Radio programs 24 hours a day. More and more people are using it all the time. It's very exciting. More and more people are actually joining Kardec Radio Facebook page all the time. And the wonderful people that bring you the Kardec Radio Facebook page are bringing program after program, at least one or two programs a day are coming out and coming out on video. And so there's all sorts of things. You can also join Facebook page Spiritism in the Spirit World Around Us, which is my Spiritism Facebook page. A lot of these videos are copied onto there. And then, of course, my blog, nwspiritism.com. So there's many ways to get spiritist information in English. And I know that's exciting to people because I get emails. You can't believe how many emails I've been getting lately saying, oh, you know, finally, spiritism in English, you know, and it, it's all, a lot of it is because of Kardec Radio. Of course, other people too, where I don't want to, you know, exclude them, but there's a lot, you know, the work, that especially Vanessa and her friends, are doing as part of the Virginia Spiritual Society uh, are just uh, amazing. And they're bringing you, you know, program after program for adults and youth and juniors that it's just wonderful. So please, you know, they're not hiding their light under a bushel. And hopefully you don't either. If, you, if you're interested in spiritism, explore more. This book I'm going now, I'm reviewing chapter after chapter on Sundays. There's no excuse not to get it. You can get it free, The Gospel According to Spiritism, on PDF. Just put in Alan Kardec and space PDF, and you can find all of Alan Kardec's books on PDF. And I see some of my people are already coming on board. Hello, everyone. But let's get right into it, because this is this is a, another interesting, and everything that, that Alan Kardec writes is... You know, you have to, it's like, it's like when you read spiritist literature, you read it once and you think you have an understanding. Then you read it again a little bit later and go, oh, okay, I think I understand it more. And then a year later, it's, oh, it meant that too. Everything is multifaceted and it's very interesting. So it's just so exciting reading the information coming to, to us from, from the spirits in, in heaven, because they're telling us a lot and it's it's packed and there's they don't waste a sentence. Unlike me, right? They don't waste a sentence. So it's it's very interesting. So let's get into chapter 24. So this is Alan Kardec starts this chapter with Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So Again, so this is interesting. So, you know, so, you know, if you have a candle, give light. And then he also uses an example of Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 to 15. And the disciples came to him and said, why, why do you speak in parables? And he answered and said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he has have more abundance, but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Okay, let me stop there. So, what what's happening? So, what he's saying is, okay, if you have, you know, we're going to give you, and we're going to give you enough. But if you have it, you got to use it. 
And he, then he also says, why does he speak in parables? Now think about how the world was and the culture was. And the, you know, this is like the Republic had just, had just gone, uh, Emperor Augustus, you know, it just kind of died when, when Jesus was, you know, preaching and Tiberius was the emperor and it was just, you know, just very full and it was still that might makes right, right? It was, you know, Socrates was 400 years before and he was killed because he said, well, you know, there's some things that are wrong, even though you have the power and the, the, the elders of Athens didn't like that. So they made him drink hemlock. So, and that's why it's important to understand when, when you read the Bible and you say, well, that's not very nice, you know, like in the New Testament, and of course the Old Testament is full of stuff that's not very nice. You have to understand that they can only communicate to, to the people at their level of culture and technology at the time. And therefore, Jesus couldn't say, well, you should be nice to everybody. And if someone's, you know, homosexual, you should be nice to them. He couldn't really say that. He could say, love all. And, and some things probably got in the Bible that he, you know, that was some shade that I don't think he meant, but it was done by men, right? It, you know, and so it was done as well as they could, and still it was done very well. So that's why you, in the spirits tell us that the messages of love and charity and fraternity are eternal. Everything else, take it as, as you wish. So... That's why he had to speak to the people in parables. And then that's why, and not until the 1850s, and as Jesus promised this, right? He promised us a consoler and gave us more information that he could give us more information that this is Alan Kardec. And, and uh, you know, I read the things in the spirits book and I, people here, they go, oh, that's interesting. But you don't really understand how revolutionary it was in 1850s where Either you were, if you were in France, you were a Catholic. If you're in England, boy, you should have been Church of England because if you were a Catholic, you're you're strange or, you know, you're Methodist. Well, okay. But that was the way it was. And so this was like against everything, everything norm. And here, of course, we're, you know, we're talking about spirituality and so on and so forth. So that's why Alan Kardec told us so much. That's why Leon Denis wrote more. Devaldo Frankel is still writing more. Chico Xavier gave us all much more information. And I still say, when we're talking about the spirit world, and we think, and I get so excited because we have so much more concrete information than you get from, you know, Buddhism or, or, or Christianity about what is heaven, the organization of, of the spirit world. But even then, I still say, it's like looking in a keyhole, right? You're looking in a keyhole and you're just kind of, you're kind of trying to figure things out and there's things are not going to show us yet because we're not ready. So this is, keep that in mind. Not that I know every, you know, so just know that and I'm speaking a lot of it. I try to give references, but, and I try to make guesses and estimates by what I, I read and understand, but, but I'm sure if you want to read spiritual literature, please go and tell me when you think I'm wrong. Cause I, I love all input. Okay. Let me carry on. So let's see, what does Alan Kardec say about this? I've said enough. And he says, it appears strange to hear Jesus say that the light should not be covered up when he constantly hid the meaning of his words under the veil of allegories, which are not understood by everyone. However, he explains this when he says to his disciples, I speak to them in parables because they are not ready to understand certain things. They see, they listen, but do not understand. So it would have been useless to have told them everything at this time. Nevertheless, I have told you because it has been given you to understand these mysteries. So he treated the people as you would children whose ideas had not yet developed. Now carry on. This is still Alan Kardec. I'm quoting. In this manner, we come to comprehend the real meaning of the words Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. This sentence does not mean that we should reveal all things without due consideration as to the convenience of this revelation. All teaching should be proportional according to the intelligence of those to be taught, because there are certain people for whom a too brilliant light would only blind without enlightening them in any way. So let's talk about that for a second. 
And then this is excellent suggestions. And as spiritists, I try to encourage everyone, go out and talk about spiritism. But we have to watch, right? Because if we talk about spiritism, like, oh, there's spirits all around us. Now look, it's like, you know, you are crazy. Uh, you know, only primitive people believe in that. And that's why you really have to understand your, your audience and what they understand and what they'll accept. And so a lot of times what I do is I, they say about this happened, I say, well, you know, that could have been caused by something in your previous life. And if they're interested, they'll ask me about it, and then I will continue on. In fact, you know, you never know what people will do. I, I talked to this one person who really a good friend, and I never talked to him about, had never talked about spiritualism before. And then I said, well, you know, I, I've, uh, I've, you know, I, I, I've really started to believe in the doctrine of spiritism. And he goes, well, what does that mean? What's, what's the doctrine? I say, you know, spirits, the, the, the spirit world talks to us. They tell us things. We, you know, we have reincarnation. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, I believe those, those precepts. I go, really? And then this is, you know, years. I said, I go, well, why do you believe? He goes, well, my father was in the army during World War II. He was a, a Pole who escaped Poland joined the army in England so he could then fight. He came back and came in like in, I think in D-Day and then fought the Germans throughout France. And he says he was in his platoon at night, he would have these visions of where as they, as they went through and they went uh, into enemy territory, he would know where they would, the Germans would set up ambushes. So, and all the troop knew that. He said, okay, you go first, you tell us, where the ambushes are, and he knew where all the ambushes were. And so all of his troop, like, so, I mean, of course, his son believed because he lived. And so you never know what experiences people have. And, you know, it's like, you know, well, you know, my my Aunt, Aunt Clara told me this, and it came true. So you never know what little, you know, the spirit was always giving us signs and signals, and are we awake enough? to understand it, right? That those who have eyes to see, see, and those who have ears to, to hear. Okay. So now let, let me carry on. So he says, um, so in this matter, we come to comprehend the meaning of the wor uh, of the words, neither do men light a candle put under a bushel. Okay, so I talked about that. So, we try to have to help people as we know, and we, you know, be careful about it and don't shock them because this is different, but some people are more open than you supply, but give little verbal clues. So Alan Kardec goes on to say the same thing happens to mankind in general as can happen to an individual. The generations have their infancy, their youth, and their maturity. Each thing must come at the right moment. The seed when sown out of season will not germinate. But what prudence holds back momentarily sooner or later will be discovered because when the correct degree of development has reached man, he seeks for him, you know, he as he seeks the light for himself and as cultures will too. So it's very interesting that this, this will happen. So, and he says, I'll carry on. He says, if providence then in his wise precaution only reveals the truth gradually, it is obvious that these truths are disclosed in proportion as humanity shows itself sufficiently mature to receive them. Providence holds them in reserve and not under a bushel. However, as men enter into possession of them, he almost always, always hides them from the masses with the intention of dominating the people. These are the ones who truly place the light under a bushel. This is why every religion has its mysteries whose examination is prohibited. But as these religions begin to become outdated, so science and intelligence have advanced and broken through the veil of mystery. Let me stop there for a second. This is one of the reasons why, you know, spirits tell us Alan Kardec came because 
organized religion, Christianity, other religions, the, the priestly class kept their kept the mysteries to themselves. And the same thing that happened during the time of you know the paganism, the Egyptian Empire, right? The, the priestly class, according to uh, Emmanuel's On the Way to the Light, knew a lot. And they were actually more advanced than us, understanding about spirits. And you can tell, you know, as far as embalming humans and uh, all the, the energy from other spirits, they were very advanced, but they kept that to themselves. And now is the time as we're in this planet of atonement and we want to go to a planet of regeneration that more people are, are going to have mediumistic abilities, more people are going to have signs and signals. It's going to be it's going to be taken out of the hands of the priestly class mm -hmm. and given to normal people. So let me go on. So then Alan Kardec says, absolute mysteries cannot exist. And Jesus was right when he said that there was no secret that would not come to be known. Everything which is hidden will be discovered one day. And what man still does not comprehend will be revealed in succession in more advanced worlds when he reaches purification. Here on earth, man still finds himself as in a thick fog. We ask ourselves what advantage can be gained from the multitude of parables whose meaning remains impenetrable. It must be noted that Jesus only expressed himself in parables in areas which were rather abstract in the doctrine. But having declared charities to one neighbor and humility as the basic conditions for salvation, everything he said in this respect is completely clear, explicit, and without any ambiguities. This is as it should be, this being a rule of conduct, a rule that everyone has to comprehend in order to be able to observe it. This was the essential point for the ignorant masses to whom he said only, this is what you need to do in order to reach heaven. On other matters, he not only disclosed his thoughts, he only disclosed his thoughts to his disciples. This was because they were more advanced, both morally and intellectually, so that Jesus could initiate them in the knowledge of more abstract truths. This is why he also said, to those who already have, even more shall be given. This is important, so think about this. If you have been given the... the the impetus, the inspiration to discover spiritism, they really want you to do more because you have been a spirit in the spirit world. For some reason, you have been led to discover spiritism and you've not led to be, to discover spiritism, to keep it as your own little, you know, guarded secret. You, you don't have to go on the street corners and talk to everybody, but you should at least not be afraid, and we'll talk about this later in an example, to show people what you are and why you believe these crazy ideas that our life is predetermined, we are reincarnated, and there are spirits around us. And these are hard. These, you know, you they put you in up to ridicule to many people. And, and then when I've talked to like Christians, they say, well, you're talking to demons. Well, no, there are, and demons aren't, aren't the uh, demons forever. They are just ignorant and immature spirits, undeveloped spirits, one should say. And so therefore, but Alan Kardec has been very careful. And I always say the Catholic church has a good point about talking to spirits because there are dangers involved. And that's why when there are mediums, spiritism, you know, says you need to, you, if you can get to a spiritual center, train how to become a medium, at least read the mediums book and other books about mediums and how to detect what type of spirits you would like to talk to. But certainly I'm not a medium and you don't need to talk to spirits in order to be a spiritist. You just need to understand the spiritist doctrine and understand the world we live in and what is what stimuli is coming at us for what reason. And once you understand, once you understand the whole organization of the spirit world, the idea that we are watched all the time, everything we are do is recorded. Then it all becomes clear. It, it becomes actually logical that if you set up 
a campus in order to improve people in life after life. This is the way it should be done. You put people in this campus, you watch them, you give them stimuli to get better. It, it, it just, you know, once you get that idea, it's like, oh, this makes sense. And this is, and, you know, people will say, well, why can I understand my previous life? I go, well, you don't need to. The stimuli will take care of it. And if you understood your, your previous life, you may be embarrassed to be a child to the parents that you poisoned at one time or, or the sister or brother that you stole all their money and you wouldn't be open to learning new things. There is a good reason for everything. And it's, it, it shows you the genius, the absolute superiority of God and the spirit world. So let me carry on with Alan Kardec. He says, today, spiritism projects its light over an immense number of obscure points, but it does not do this without due consideration. When the spirits give their teachings, they conduct themselves with admirable prudence. They consider gradually, one by one, the various known parts of the doctrine, leaving the other parts revealed only when it will become opportune to bring them forth from obscurity. If they had presented the complete doctrine right from the first moment, fewer people would have shown themselves disposed to accept it, and those who were not prepared would have become frightened by it so that the dissemination would suffer as a consequence. So then, if the spirits still have not told everything outright, it is not because there are mysteries within the doctrine, which only the privileged few may penetrate, nor is it because they have hidden the candle under the bushel, but because each piece of knowledge must come at the most opportune moment. They give time for each idea to mature and spread before presenting another, and for events to prepare the way for the acceptance of new ideas. Now, let's talk about an example of this, preparing, preparing the way for acceptance of new ideas. Now, in, in one of the books by Chico Xavier, I'm sorry, this is by the Reverend G. Val Owen in the uh, uh, Beyond the Veil. And there was a minister of unspecified religion. He passed away. And he was assigned to a house on the second sphere of heaven. And the spirit realm sent a woman to help him discuss why he was unable to speak what he knew was the truth. He hid his life under a bushel, right? They sent him to, to the physical world, where we are right now, so he could help people. And they said, okay, he knew that people needed help with communicating with loved ones who have passed on. And instead of assisting those in need, he guided them elsewhere for he was afraid to be exposed to scorn and ridicule from his colleagues. Now, when you read that, you go, well, you shouldn't be afraid to speak the truth, right? And, and it's so easy to tell everyone to stand up for what you believe in, to not be afraid to speak the truth. But if we think about it, we know it's not easy. When others are all professing a certain belief, we become tentative in any differences in our own thoughts. Let me give you an example, and I think this example was given to me for a purpose. When I was in college, I was invited to a study, right? Typical. All psychological studies are all about freshmen and sophomores in college. So who knows how correct psychology is, but it's all about freshmen and, and sophomores, right? That's kind of a joke. And I was told to listen to a series of beeps, and I had headphones on, and to tell the leader at the head of the table the number of beeps I heard. And there were about four or five other participants around the table. And so I heard the beeps and I kept track of the correct number. And after the first round, each of us were, was asked, what was the number of beeps we heard? And my answer was different from all the others. And I said, well, this is weird. I was confused. And I tried to go through the instructions I was given. And I go, what was the definition of a beep? Did it include static? And on the second round, again, I had a different answer. And I was now worried. In my, is my hearing bad? Was I supposed to count static a certain way? And on the third round, I just conformed to what the others said. I had given up. Obviously, there was something wrong with my thinking or my hearing. And after a few more rounds, we finished. Then I was told the other participants were told what to say. I was the only variable. The experiment was to determine the effect of group pressure 
what I heard was true, but I lacked the confidence and conviction to report the truth. I had failed miserably. Boy, did I, was I mad at myself. But I am eternally grateful for being allowed to learn a very valuable lesson. In fact, as I look back, I am certain the spirit realm guided me to that room and experiment so I could learn to have faith in what I knew and not to let others influence me. The embarrassment I felt caving into group pressure was so, so easily was intense. I'd never forgotten how disappointed I was in myself. What a complete fool I was. But as I said before, it made a lasting impression on me. No longer would I suffer changing my belief if I had the facts to support it in the face of social pressure from others. While I can certainly say often, instead of speaking out, I did remain silent in order to keep my job, each time feeling small for doing so. But also, let me tell you something. A wise person once told me that when everybody tells you you're doing something wrong, sometimes at that point in time, that means you're doing the right thing. You got to think about that sometimes. Sometimes, and that's only if your conscience verifies that you're doing the right thing, if you feel good about your decision. If you feel bad about your decision and you think you're going to hurt somebody, then that is, then they are right. But if your conscience is clear, then you can go on. So as I was saying, I did remain silent many times that I should have spoken out. But also, sometimes I refuse to go along, which could explain the lack of advancement in my career. But I made it to middle management, but then I, I was up in a higher measure for a bit, and then I just couldn't, I couldn't force the Kool-Aid down to, to the, to the other people. And, um, yeah, I, I just, I, okay. And I said, forget it. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to try and, you know, and do that. Other people, God bless them. They can, but I cannot follow the company directives and sacrifice people like I needed, needed to do. So that's my explanation to say, I'm very sympathetic to this, this, this poor soul who was confronted in heaven for what he did, or more rightly, what he did not do on earth. And his case was discussed with the Reverend Ziba Owen. And they begin with a description of a house in the second sphere of heaven where those who have recently passed over stay for a time to recuperate and to determine their eventual place in the heavenly spheres. And here's a quote from the book. One of our band not long ago went to this home and sought out a man who had come to such a forward state as this. On earth, he had been a minister of religion who had read somewhat of what you call psychic matters and the possibility of speaking to one to other between us and you, as we do at this present. But he could not come at the thing in thorough and was afraid to say out even so much as in his own heart he knew to be true and good. So he did what many of his fellows are doing. He put the matter aside from him. He could find other ways in which to help his fellow man, and this other matter might await the time when it was more and more widely understood and accepted of men. And then he would be one of the foremost to proclaim what he knew and would not shirk his duty in that time. So, end quote. Now, in other words, he decided when the coast is clear, he would pop his head out and become part of the new group. And I once heard a wonderful exp explanation of how senior and executive management operates in large companies. And I guess this is in large governments too. Each manager wishes to lead to make himself or herself noticed as a performer. But on the other hand, they don't want to stick out too far because to be too different is not to be part of the group. Hence, their behavior was described as constantly swimming in a bait ball. You don't want to be too distant out of the bait ball. Otherwise, a predator will pick you out. Therefore, you want to change direction with the rest of the fish. Huddling together in relative safety, hoping some other fish close to the outer ring are completely outside, will fall prey. And this is why, this is ingrained in us as humans. This is why one sees some of the dumbest ideas gain traction and even thrive in corporations and governments. The fish aren't thinking of the actual direction. They're merely trying hard to keep up with others so as not to expose themselves. 
this man didn't want to reveal this priest, this religious man, I don't know in what, what denomination he was, that we, the incarnates, are able to speak to the other side. For doing so would, would expose him to derision and malicious gossip from his peers. Therefore, when members of his flock came to him inquiring about communicating with deceased loved ones, this is what would occur. I will quote. But when others came to him and asked him first, first whether it was possible to speak with their dear ones who had come over here, and second, whether it was God's will to do so, he put them in mind of their Christian belief in the saintly communion, but urged them that they be patient until the church should have tested and sifted and should have issued guidance for those who were of the fold. And while he waited, lo, his time on earth, was fulfilled and he was carried over into his this home where he might rest a while and come to some decision on what attitude he had assumed on the verse matters of his calling and of the use he had made of his of his opportunities he had hid his candle under the bushel so in other words people came to this man of the church because they had seen evidence and clues about the other side they didn't do this in the vacuum and before the internet made possible the gathering of near-death experiences from around the world, before the power of the Catholic, Catholic Church has diminished to the point where people could freely talk about psychic phenomena, there still was an acknowledgement among the masses that a life beyond death existed and that loved ones still lived in another dimensions. They knew, people talked, they knew they either knew or had witnessed themselves a feeling, a sense, an intuition of a future event or an actual near death or other experience within the spirit realm. And also surveys have told us, even with Christians, that 25% of them believe in reincarnation. There is an innate sense that we are not on earth just this one time and that it would be unfair of God to, to, to sentence someone to a, eternity in hell for one life when someone is born in such terrible circumstances and people make mistakes so now the catholic church's position as well as others that one can't communicate with the other side didn't match their own understanding and for yourself you can read examples of near-death experiences and others in in my book the spirit world talks to us and I reveal the extent of what was shown and what the information was supplied and what it really meant from the other side. This is why it's so interesting. And this is why I started looking at near-death experiences because they really, they confirmed spiritism. And they can, and, and I even going through books by other people and they confirmed spiritism. The, the, the basic precepts, not everything, some people were, I think were a little bit off, but the basic precepts confirms the doctrine of spiritism they they said they felt love in the spirit world they had uh you know kind of life reviews they all came back and they said they had life blueprints they knew most of them knew that they were vastly superior in the spirit world with their spirit brain not their little puny human brain that you know like a small you know a small conduit information gets there from our spirit brain via our paraspirit to our physical brain all of these things they saw bright angels that are bright because of the reflection of the love of god and they saw the a lot of times future and they saw how things are logical and mathematical so these are things that people saw for themselves and they need answers and this is what drives people to explore so now so this man, he had this power, he had this talent, but he was too worried to show it. God bless him. I've been there. I'm sure I've been there too. So, but they want to know why, what happened. So the spirit world sent an emissary to speak to the newly departed man of the church. And the spirit was called Niadne. And she sought him out in his resting place in sphere too. And she found him in a peaceful garden surrounded by plants and flowers of indescribable lights and colors. And she went to him and stood before him. He bowed and he would have passed on, but she spoke to him. And he goes, she said, my friend, it was you I was sent to speak to you. And he replied, 
Who, who sent you to me? And she said, the angel who has to answer to our master for your life work while in the earth's sphere. And he said, well, why should he have to answer for me? He says, surely one, everyone must answer for his own life and work. Isn't that so? And then she said, well, that is surely so. Yet to our sorrow, we know that it is not the whole of the matter. For not you do or leave undone ends with yourself alone. He who had you in charge made effort time and time again for your welfare and in part succeeded, but not in the whole. And now the earth period has been closed for you. He has to sum up your life and answer for his charge of you to his joy and also to his sorrow. And then he said, well, this seems hardly fair to my mind. It is not my idea of justice that another should suffer for one's failure. And then the sweet angel, Diane, said, and yet that is what you taught the people yonder. It was your understanding of the doings at Calvary, and you handed it on to them. Not all you said of it was true, and yet it was true in part. For we do not share joy on behalf of another joy, for do we not, I'm sorry, for do we not share joy in behalf of another joy, and, we, and shall we not also share in his sorrowing? This your angel does for you even now. He both joy, joys and sorrows over you. And then the guy said, please explain. And this is what she said. He joys in that you did good work for charity, for your heart was much bathed in love for God and man. He sorrowed for you in that you were not content to do what you taught was done for you on Calvary. For you were not willing to become scorned for men and to be withered with their disapproval. For you valued the praise of men more than God's praise and hoped to be able one day to buy more cheaply your reward for having spread light upon the darkness when that darkness should begin to pass from night into the twilight of the dawning day. But you did not see in your weakness and lack of valiant purpose of strength to suffer shame and coldness that the time for which you waited was the time when your help would be needful and the fight all by one, by others of more stalwart metal. While you stood with onlookers and viewed the fight from a fair vantage ground, while those others fought and gave and took blows good and strong and fell forward in the battle when they would not surrender their cause to those who opposed them. So let me say a couple of things. He, when, when, when she said, he sorrows for you, for you're not content to do what you taught was done for you on Calvary. And so what that means, so when before you are reincarnated and if you if you read the book no solar they talk about going into the reincarnation pavilion and in that reincarnation pavilion you'll have classes and it will help you hopefully help you prepare for your next life and the people who are coming here on the mission will have years of classes to prepare them for when he was coming to this life to prepare this person to open up and start helping people understand about the other side. Now, when my wife and I, as an example for myself, went to a, a mediums meeting and we were given a message and we were said, well, first we were said we failed over and over and over again in previous lives, complete failures. Thank you very much. But in this life, we were prepared in that kind of reincarnation pavilion. We went for, decades being trained for what we should be doing. Evidently, I was a very slow and stubborn learner. I couldn't just take, I couldn't just take a simple lecture and say, you should do this. And I go, okay, no, it took decades to try and keep me on the, on the path that I should at least try. Even now I know I failed in many, many things, but it just shows you you don't really understand the preparation you have for the life you're living now and sometimes when bad things happen to you and then people are mean to you and give you a tough time that's really a stimuli you need that like oh gosh i should have been prepared for this and i needed to remind that you know life's not easy and there's something i should do better that's how you should look at everything and then getting back to this poor guy right and when she told him what she told him you know i i just feel so bad for him because 
He was doing what he could while weighing the pros and cons of his actions. He was a clog in a, you know, in a large, brutal organization and fighting, you know, fighting who knows, you know, the politics are everywhere in organizations on earth. And I have faced the same dilemmas and have been gutless time and time again. And I remember back in high school, I was walking home with some friends and passing two other young high school boys when they attacked us. And I ran away, leaving my friends behind. Again, a spineless coward. And I vowed never to do that again. But of course I did. In management, I allowed people to be fired or given bad reviews just because a certain percentage of employees had to be found wanting. I performed such despicable acts because I selfishly desired to keep my position and much worse. I wanted to demonstrate my usefulness in carrying out orders. Unlike the man of the cloth, at least he engaged in charity and good works, while I only wished to make money. So upon hearing what he did from the emissary, this man of the cloth, he asked, but why all this? What is your reason for coming to see me at all? And then the, the sweet person said, because he sent me and because he that would all, he almost might come to you, but it is not able until you are of a mind more clear of purpose and until you have mastered and acknowledge the various elements which made up your earth life and their true values and appraisement. And then he goes, Okay, I see, partly at least. Thank you. I have been in a cloud all this time. I came here away from the others to try to understand it all better. You have said some pretty straight things to me. Perhaps you will add to this service by telling me how I am to begin. And then she said, now that is my mission here and now. It is the one thing which I was charged. I was to probe your mind to make you look inward upon yourself. And if you showed any will to progress, I was to give you a message. This will you have now shown, not very heartily, however. And this is my message from your angel guide. Let me stop this for a second. Notice how the spirits talk to him. She said, this will you have shown, but, you know, not a lot. And she said, not very heartily, right? But, you know, not with all your might, but you've shown it. So if everyone ever sees a medium and they say, well, the spirits think you're just great and everything you're doing is wonderful, you know that's false. Because when I've ever had medium messages, it's like, okay, but you need to improve, right? You, 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 you're, you're doing okay, but you have to improve. And then when I've been in mediums meeting, at the end of the meeting, uh, then they usually give a general message to the medium. So I, I'm never at the table. I'm at the back of the room and I'm just sitting listening, right? They always say, okay, you guys, you, you, you need to work harder. And so the message usually you'll get from the, the advanced spirit is like you would get from a very competent and brilliant teacher who knows you can do better. It's not going to put up with your, you know, what, and your reasons for saying, oh, I, you know, I'm kind of sleepy now, or I don't, you know, I, I can't do that. No, they're not going to put up with that. They're going to say, no, you need to do better and get, do better. This is the type of messages. If you really are getting messages from higher spirits, that's the kind you'll get. If you're getting flattery, the put, get that signal in your mind, you know, the alarm goes off. They're, that spirit is not an advanced spirit, most probably, and they're setting you up to do something. So that's just a warning. So anyway, that's just my opinion. Please read the Medium's book and other books, uh, the, the Domains of Mediumship by Chico Xavier. And you make your your own decision. So anyway, I'll carry on to what she is saying to this to this man. And this is my message from your angel guide who awaits you to lead you on when you have trained yourself some little more. You are requested to take up your quarters in a home, which I will show you in the first sphere. From there you will, from time to time, visit the earth plane and help those there in their communion with their friends here in these spheres of light and also aid them in speaking comfort and encouragement to those who are in the darker spheres that they may progress into the light and peace of his presence. 
There are even those among you to whom you have ministered, several who are trying to do this good work for those in anguish, and also to give and to get gladness by their speaking with your loved ones here. They sought your guidance in this matter, and you had no courage to give it to them. Go and help them now, and when you are able to make known to them your personality, unsay what you then said, or say what you lack courage to tell them, and this you shall have some shame, but they will have much joy and will deal very kindly with you, for they have scented already the fragrance of love from realms higher and brighter than this in which you have been resting. But the choice is still for you, go or not go, as your heart inclines you. And then Niani, the, the spirit, left him pondering upon his decision, whether to travel to a lower sphere and facilitate communication between the earthly and heavenly planes, or to remain in his home in the second sphere. Whatever his decision, it will be his alone. Free will is one of the divine laws. We are not forced to become better. We are presented opportunities in which we may learn. In the spirit world, for those in one of the heavenly spheres, we are given options and choices. We move up or down at our determination. On earth, we encounter episodes that have been predetermined to allow us to learn what the, we have lacked in the previous life. Again, we have the choice to either absorb the lesson or completely ignore it. Now, while in the lower zones or the dark abyss, also called purgatory, those spirits are placed in a location where they are daily reminded of who they are and what they believe and are given the exact environment they so desired while on earth. Although now that they are in the middle of it, they shall have second thoughts and one day emerge. And in our physical life, we are given challenges, just like the man who was given a chance to spread his knowledge, but decline the sublime summons because it was too risky. I've done the same. We we must face our difficult choices. The problem, our decisions will not only affect our life here on earth, but our future path in the spirit world. Remember, for any sacrifice we make on earth in the pursuit of doing good, we shall be rewarded a hundredfold when we return back home after shedding our physical bodies. And I encourage everybody to better understand the hurdles put into our path and you can read about that by reading my book, the, uh, the Problem is the Solution. And where we realize that what we see as troubling times are actually valuable lessons we need to take to heart so we may spiritually ascend. It is very important to understand that we are given opportunities to learn from these experiences. And the more we have these experiences, the better off we are by trying to keep a good attitude and say, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to understand? And that is important is to, because everything that happens to you happens to you. Well, not everything. I mean, the, the, the dramatic trials and tribulations are most probably pretty certainly caused by what you've done wrong in the past and what you need to learn. And usually you're given pretty benign lessons to learn that. Unless you refuse to learn it, then your lessons are going to be more dramatic and harsh. And this is not punishment. This is so you learn and improve. It's like putting your two-year-old two in a corner. They, caught, they cry and scream, think you are the worst parent in the world because you try, you're trying to modify their behavior. Of course, you have to modify their behavior. Otherwise, no one could stand them, right? You're... you're it's your responsibility to turn them into decent children and later on adults. The spirit world's responsibility is to do the same. Now, this is why reading and studying about spiritism is so important. Because you say, okay, why do I have to go through this pain? What, you know, I, I can be loving, right? I think the important thing is, is the fact that you have to understand how much power you have as you go higher and higher in the spirit hierarchy. In the spirit world, thought is action. Here on earth, we can think and no one knows it, right? No one cares. 
And we, you know, if we're smart, we learn to keep our mouths shut. But it's not good enough in the spirit world. Remember, God in the spirit world knows everything you're thinking. Everything is tagged with our unique ID. It's all recorded. And when you're in the spirit world, everything you think, other people, hey, they know what you're thinking. They can see it. They see the images in your mind. They can read your thoughts. You're an open book. So do you want people with the power to create with their mind who are vengeful, hateful, jealous, petty? No. You need someone who has absolute discipline with their thoughts. And that's what we have to work on. That's where we're going through this obstacle course called life on earth. And, and that's why I think it's so important to read and study about spiritism because it takes a while. Some people are much faster and brighter, but for many of us, it takes a while to really keep reading and reading and then understand that, oh my heavens, this is really why these things happen. And really these other things that happen to me and the trials I'm going through, now that I know the grand design of my life, they're not as important. It's like, you know, okay, I, I can't buy that new car or I'm not going to get that bigger TV I want and, and all I may have to rent instead of buy. But, you know, I'm only on this earth for just a tiny amount of time. Not that big of a deal. So, because once you understand that we're all here on all different levels, all people on all different levels on earth, primitive spirits who are, you know, committing crimes because, you know, if, hey, I'll just take what I want. But in, you know, it doesn't mean they should be in jail, but you need to understand that you can still love them, but you need to understand that someday they'll be at your level. Maybe they'll rise higher, right? They'll, they'll get that. They'll, all of a sudden the light will turn on and up they go with the ladder. So, that's why you need to stand it. You know, this is why there's all of us at different levels. Now, when we move to a planet of regeneration, we'll lose a lot of those primitive spirits, and this place will be a much better place. And that's where we're heading towards now. But, and again, that's why spirit has been brought to us. We need to work on that. Anyway, so I hope this helps you today. I want to say God bless. Please tell everybody about Kardec Radio. Get the app on your iPhone and your Android phone. Join. Join my YouTube channel uh, to subscribe, and I will post this on my YouTube channel. Just look up Spiritism, uh, uh, Brian Foster, if you want, or NW Spiritism. You'll find my channel, and uh, and please, you know, subscribe and like and hit the bell and tell other people if you can, and especially during this time when we have this pandemic and and the 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 news media is trying to spread fear because that's how they try to get views right the more fear they get you to click again or watch again spirits are telling us don't be frightened this 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 virus is going to go everywhere if you wear a mask or not it's not going not to make a difference stay inside or not not going to make a difference now they encourage everyone to follow the rules just like as jesus said render the caesar what is caesar and unto god what is god but follow the rules do it you know do what you can but know that Everything has been predetermined and that so and take prudent, you know, prudent precautions. Some people are going to be taken because it's their time. And some people think they had no pre-existing conditions. Some people are going to be taken for a very good reason. This is what one of the spirits told us. It's because they, they're going to be taken what we think as early in life because they want them to reincarnate much sooner than they would have so they can help this planet become a planet of regeneration. There's always a reason. And when you, when you really understand that we're immortal souls, when people pass away and when they're leaving the earth, it's not a bad thing, especially if you're going to one of the levels of heaven, it is a great thing because you're back into the real life, the life you'll be in for the vast majority of your immortal life. Anyway, I wanna say God bless everybody and Good night. God bless.